Welcome to Thrive in Your Third Act. This show offers practical tips and real life stories to help you call forward the best version of yourself. Hi, I'm your host, Joanna Klein. I am the creator and CEO of Journey to Legacy, where we believe your life matters. And it's time to share your story. My guest today is a dear friend and an accountability buddy with me. Her name is Karen Seltz, and she calls herself the Uncensored Love Coach. Karen is a spiritual channel. She's a healer. She's an author, a speaker, and a coach who supports women to fully embrace all parts of themselves to develop the courage and confidence necessary to create meaningful, vibrant lives that they're passionate about. Now, I've had the opportunity to get to know Karen really well in this role of accountability buddy. We meet on pretty much a weekly basis. We share our declarations of what it is we're planning to do for the, for the week. We hold each other's feet to the fire. We're honest with each other. We're both committed to this very loving honesty and create this safe space for us to thrive and to, to feel the support and to feel that someone really has my back. So welcome, Karen. Thank you, Joanna. It's so great to be here with you. I'm so excited to have you here with me. So I want to start with a question to you. What is, what does uncensored love, so uncensored self-love mean? Well, it's interesting because back before I did a bunch of personal growth work, and I had my first coaching clients, I would get these hits from God, universe, source. And I'd be like, I can't say that. They're going to fire me. They're not going to like me, blah, blah, blah. And I had all these stories. And so I would water it down and people would get, as you can guess, watered down results. So finally, I developed enough courage to say, okay, okay, I'll say the thing. And I said the thing that to my ear sounded so harsh. I'm like, <laughs> before I'd be like, I can't possibly say that, right? So I said the thing and it was like watching someone get punched in the gut in slow motion. It was like, Poof. and I'm like, what happened? And then the tears started and I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I'm onto something. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly the thing that person needed to hear to cut through the bullshit, mm -hmm. to become real and to own that part that they had been denying. Mm -hmm. So after that, I started to just go wherever I was called to go, say whatever I was called to say, be whoever I got to be for that person and really get myself out of the way and not worry about people liking me anymore. So I am definitely uncensored, I swear. And I say things that to most humans sound really harsh. Well, okay, first of all, I can um, attest to the fact that you're uncensored. Um, I have never experienced you as harsh. I've experienced you as real. Um, I've experienced the punch. And I am a total believer in what it is that you're that you're doing and saying around this whole thing with just with stopping worrying about what someone is going to say and being so gingerly and careful about it and just saying what's real and the impact that that can have on people. Yeah. It's amazing too, because a lot of us grow up thinking we know what people need, thinking we know what they need to hear, thinking we know what they can handle. And we're like coddling everybody and then people stay the same. So for me, that's not loving at all to hold people small, like they can't handle what is coming to me to say is holding them so small. And I see people much bigger than that, that they can handle it. If I'm called to say it, I know it's meant for them and I get to trust it. And that's what I've spent, I don't know, the last four or five years doing is like honing my self-trust and letting go of if people like me. Well, and an amazing benefit of someone being on the receiving end of this kind of coaching is that the transformation happens so much faster. We can be in therapy and like going through all of this stuff. And I mean, and, and I love, you know, therapy has been great. So it's not that therapy isn't great, but what I've experienced when it comes to this kind of coaching is that it it's faster. It's like, it's, it's a quicker realization of what needs to happen and just getting to it. Yeah. 
because it's not coming from me. It's coming from maybe their higher self, whatever you believe in God, universe source. And I'm just channeling it. Mm -hmm. And it is specifically for that other person. There's no other purpose to it. So like in my experience, I had so much denial. And if somebody would have been straight with me like that, I think it would have cut through years of me being in denial because mm -hmm. I totally believed my stories. I, I was like positive. They were fact. <laughs> they were not. Would, would you speak more about channeling? Because some people watching might not really even understand what that means. Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't, I'm not trained in it. I don't know anything. So what I personally mean by it is before I coach somebody, well, first I ask them permission. Is it okay if I share with you what I'm getting, what's coming in for you? And before I meet with them at all, I say a prayer, like whoever I pray to, I just say, get me out of the way and speak through me. And then I believe in certain principles, like I don't know what anything means or what anything is for. I don't know what my brother or sister needs, but I know you do. Yeah. And so it's, it gets the ego. I'm like, okay, ego, take a seat over here. We got this, you know, and, and then I just, it's a state of empty headedness because none of the, nothing that I'm saying is coming from my intellect, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I, which is so freeing for me as a coach because I don't need to know anything. I yeah. just need to be open, present, and just whatever comes out, comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's another piece to it. And I, I know for me, um, this fear of being judged and uh, this, you know, the whole people pleaser in me has been worried about what people think about me. And so sometimes you know there's sometimes this notion of like being that direct with someone can be received as judgment it can be received as advice giving and how do you make that distinction or how does a recipient know it's not judgment it's not advice giving it does it feel different oh 100 percent it's interesting, like when I am in that place where I'm just open, it's never been received like, how dare you? They, they do have the, like I'm hit. But then, there, then there's this moment like, oh my gosh, how could she have known that? And there's this feeling of being seen. Like, oh my gosh, finally, I can let the mask down. I could take it off because it's exhausting keeping it up and somebody sees through it. So I can just be me. I don't have to pretend anymore. So there's also this sense of relief that somebody sees them. They don't have to pretend anymore. Yeah. They don't, uh, it's a lot. I, I don't know about you, Joanna, but I've helped. I mean, I was the, the greatest mask wearer ever. I was such an actress. Mm -hmm. And the moment that somebody let me know they could see right through my mask, I'm like, well, why am I bothering to wear it? It's <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> It is exhausting, totally. So it's truth bombs. I mean, basically, it's these truth bombs that come from source. It's not. It's it's not. You haven't like done your homework on this person. It's like you're just in the moment with them, and this through this experience, through this interaction, through the permission of the person that you're with, you're sharing these truth bombs. Yeah, and in addition to that, there's intention behind it. I am. 100% intentional that I am unconditionally loving. I love the person no matter what, no matter what they've said, no matter what they do, no matter how they react to me, I'm not attached. I mean, I have people call me names. I have people say they want to hit me. I'm like, okay, that's okay. I'm not here to be liked. You don't have to like me. I would rather you be authentic. Yeah, that's, that's a huge skill to be able to not be impacted or not, you know, to be that unconditionally loving, sharing things and having people come back and react in ways, if, and I'm sure it doesn't happen very often with you, but, if, but when they do, or when you have had those moments where they're reacting negatively, how, what can you share with people who are watching on how to develop that for themselves like how do we develop that skill of not it's basically not taking it personally not being offended by it 
Yeah, that's that's really interesting. When you are super intentional and you ask, like, get me out of the way and speak through me. I just, I don't know that it's possible to take it personally because it's not you speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's not personal at all. Mm -hmm. So when I'm taking it personally, or here's how I know when I have an opinion suddenly on what somebody should do or how they should react to me, it's that should word. Mm -hmm. Anytime I have an opinion or a judgment, I'm like, oh, just a minute. And I, I say, just a minute, I need to reground myself because I have an opinion. And I will say this <laughs> because anytime I have an opinion, the ego has crept back in, which edges God out or edges spirit out. Mm -hmm. So I just do that. I take a moment. I'm like, speak through me, get me out of the way. <laughs> I do the same process again. Mm -hmm. I don't know what anything means or what anything is for, but I know you do. And and then I go back in. I'm like, you know what? Could you start that over? Because my ego crept in. Mm -hmm. and well. so it's just noticing. Mm -hmm. and, and my body, my biggest teller is like, I'm so right about this. <laughs> That's my big flashing neon sign. Like, I'm right. I'm right. Or what's going on? they don't think I'm brilliant. I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> so now I can laugh about that because it's so funny that I think that. But I know then, okay, that's the ego creeping in. So to not take it personally is to not be attached mm -hmm. to how they're going to react or respond. And we say this all the time, like get yourself out of the way, but how do you really do that? Mm -hmm. well, for me, it's intention. My intention is to be unconditionally loving. Now, I, as a human, think I know what that looks like. Well, I, as a human, am wrong. 100% of the time. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure that out. So sometimes unconditional love can look like a slap upside the head with a two by four, mm -hmm. which is some kind of a truth bomb that they've been in denial about. Or sometimes it can be like holding loving space and just being quiet. I mean, it can look however it looks, mm -hmm. but it's not being attached to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it takes practice. That's all I can say is mm -hmm. it takes courage, the courage to be rejected, the courage to not be liked, and it takes practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And the word intention is such an important one too. I know that when I'm looking for guidance in whatever way I'm looking looking for it, the more clear I am with my intention, the more clear it is of what, what I'm doing, or even when I'm offering and being available to someone else, being clear of my intention with that is, it's like a, 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 a light on the path <laughs> for, to guide us forward. Oh, I love that. What a beautiful visual light on the path. Yeah. And it's like, for me too, it's like, it surrounds the, the whole interaction. It's like a big hug around all, you know what I mean? Depending on what the intention is, but <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it surrounds it. It holds it like a safety blanket or something. Mm -hmm. But I like the light too. Well, and I, I know from personal experience with being with you, you know, having our weekly sessions is that that willingness for both of us to be in that place, to, to both give and receive, to, to share the truth bombs, to be honest with each other, to, um, to I mean, I, the word is calling each other out. If ever, if ever we're picking up that there is some disconnect between what we are saying is important to us and what kind of energy either of us is picking up about the other is yeah. in terms of, yeah. Um, yeah, I love that. Integration. And, yeah, and it's like, you and I have a relationship. So we know, like I know 100% that you have my back and you have my best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. And I believe you know that about me too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from that, it's much easier for me to receive the harsh, I mean, they're not harsh, but the things that call me forward, you know, like Karen, you're not, I know who you are and you're not being that right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's a key thing to bring that you bring into your coaching with people is you know, the, the 
unconditional, you know, the uncensored love, the uh, and encouraging them to this uncensored or this uncensored self love, having their back. But how does someone who is receiving the coaching recognize that their coach has their back? I believe it's like just a feeling. It's a knowing, and they get to trust it. And if people aren't trusting me as a coach, it has nothing to do with them. I get to do my work. Okay, where am I not trusting myself? Because it has nothing to do with them. It has to do with me not trusting myself. So I go and do my work on that. Okay, and it's so easy to find. The, the second it happens, I just like go in. I'm like, okay, where am I not trusting myself? And usually it will come back to me not keeping an agreement that I made either with someone else or with myself and with myself, it could be in my head. And, and my, fa my favorite example to use is one that a lot of women can relate to. And it's like, I go to the freezer, I get out the container of ice cream and I'm like, I'm going to have one bite. And I get out the spoon and I have a bite. I put it back. I go sit my butt back on the couch. Five minutes later, I'm like, gosh, I really want another bite. Well, in the past I would go get as many bites as I wanted. And I would break my word to myself constantly. Mm -hmm. Now I know better because the subconscious mind is keeping track of everything. Mm -hmm. It's like um, OSHA with a clipboard, like, uh-huh, mm -hmm, sure, you're going to do that. So next time I say I'm going to do something, it's like, yeah, remember last time with the ice cream, you're so full of crap. You might as well just give up now because you know you're not going to keep your word. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so little. Those, every time we make an agreement, it is imperative that we keep it, which is another whole nother field of work. The people that are people pleasers that say yes to everything mm -hmm. get to take a breath, take a moment, take a beat. Is that a yes for me? Or is it a no? Or is it a not right now? Being integrity with yourself. But you said something really profound that um, I want to uh, unpack a little bit further. And interesting in terms of taking responsibility that if you're coaching someone, if whether it's initial meeting or first couple of meetings, and they're still, they're still not trusting, you're taking responsibility for the fact that they're not trusting you. So that's, that's an interesting concept that I think most people don't think in terms of explain that more. Okay. So my and maybe an example if you have one. Yeah, my spiritual beliefs are there is nothing outside of me. So everything that I see in somebody else is a reflection of me. I'm looking in a mirror. So if someone shows up not trusting themselves or me, it is a reflection of me. Otherwise, I would not be able to see it. So for example, most of us grow up with certain messages. For me, it was like, you're so selfish. How could you do that? So I, I had like really thin skin when it came to someone's calling me selfish. And that word would, man, I would fight someone if they called me that. I'd be like, how dare you? You know, like you're the one who's selfish, you know, whatever. I would just go into that thing. When I look at it as a part of me, because we all have every single characteristic within us, we just learn that some are more desirable to have. If I present as not selfish or whatever the opposite is to me at that moment, my mom will love me. So of course I'm going to not want to be selfish because I want my mom to love me. But when I take that out of me, it's like ripping out a piece of my soul. And there's a gaping hole here that I'm going to try to fill with something else. Mm -hmm which is how addictions get started. Like what we fill it with food, TV, shopping, sex, drugs, alcohol, whatever. Mm -hmm. So when we take back, we take ownership, we're like, okay, come back in selfishness. Come on, you're okay here, I got you. And we don't have a charge to it. Then we can show up fully as the opposite, which for me is generosity. Mm -hmm. But not until I embrace my selfish part, can I show mm -hmm. up as generous. And if I'm rejecting that selfish part, guess who I'm going to, what I'm going to see in everybody out here, hmm. selfishness. Oh, he's selfish. She's selfish. The dog's selfish, whatever. I don't care. So that's how, how it is. Like we're all parts of the whole too. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Does it answer the question? Yeah. Well, so let me, let me reflect back what I'm hearing so that 
when we're seeing something in, in someone else, and even in a coaching client relationship, if it, it's a reflection of what's happening within us, we see it because we know it. And it could be good stuff. I mean, it could be amazing. We're seeing beauty and we're seeing power and, and, and empowerment and all those wonderful things. Or, you know, it could also be we're seeing fear, we're seeing um, distrust. And when we see it, even though, even though you're, you're channeling, right, you're channeling and you're getting this message and communication, but if the relationship isn't connected, if there isn't that safety, that, that sense of safety and trust, then it's a reflection of some disconnect. Maybe you're not being completely pure in that taking in the, the channeling and in, in the message from spirit. There's still something that needs to get cleaned up. And that this person, a client with you as a coach has appeared in order for you both to heal, have that opportunity to heal that. 100%, 100%. So I'm going to attract clients that are ready to heal stuff that I've healed and stuff that I'm still working on, both. Because I don't know, I don't believe we're ever fully healed yeah. or else we don't need to be here. So mm -hmm. I've healed certain things, maybe to a higher degree than the clients I'm calling in. Mm -hmm. And then my coach has healed things that I still get to heal, right? It's, that's how it work, but a hundred percent. And I love that you, this is a projection. What we're talking about is like, we see something outside of ourselves and it's, if it's something we don't want, it's a part of ourselves we've rejected. We project it onto other people, but I love that you brought up. It could be positive too because mm -hmm. we don't see anything outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So whatever our judgments or opinions, assessments of anybody else, there are subconscious judgments of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I love how that works, especially when you start looking at like, like say Oprah, she's like so woke or whatever you want to call this. Right. You know? Well, if you can see that, you have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, Oh, I, what's I, I, I just have been doing some thinking about the whole concept of transformation and seeing transformation as, as being woke. You know, it's like coming back to our pure selves. It's rather than going towards something new, it's really coming back to who, who we truly are. It's waking up to who we truly are, to our true essence. Oh, that's beautiful. A hundred percent. That's, that's one of my things. Like when I am like in a spiral, like I'm feeling bad about myself or I'm like just believing the stories that, are, you know, the limiting belief kind of stories, I will call my people, my tribe. And I'll say, I have forgotten the truth of who I am. Could you remind me? Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's like, okay. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I am powerful. I am, you know, I have infinite possibilities. I'm passionate. I'm loving. I'm love, whatever it is. It's true. Yes. We all get thrown off. But we by myself, I will sit in that spiral and I'll just keep revolving re instead of evolving. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you were talking in terms of um, the, the people that you help. Do you have what you would like? What would you describe? Or who are your best clients? I guess. I mean, if you, if I don't know if that's the best way to say it, but who, who can you help most? I know you can help a lot of people, but where do you just off the top? Yeah. So people that are open to coaching, of course, number one, a lot of the women that come to me are recovering perfectionists. We want to, we, right? I'm a recovering perfectionist. So of course, that's who I'm going to attract. We want things to look good. We want to look good. We want to look smart. We want to look like we have the answer. We don't want to put anything out there until it's perfect. So it's le letting go of that perfection and just taking one imperfect step after another. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's people, women that have a lot of self-doubt, Oftentimes it's women that have a higher calling and they keep like trying to turn down the volume. Like, no, I can't do that. Who am I to think I could do that? And as they get older, that calling gets so loud, they can't ignore it anymore. And yet they feel like they don't know where to start. 
They're like, uh, well, I have this calling, but I don't know what to do about it. So then I work on, you know, the, the mindset piece, the spiritual connection piece and the inspired action steps. Wow, nice. One thing you didn't mention that I know um, is part of how you do your work. And uh, certainly I get the benefit of that with meeting with you every week is your sense of humor. You're, you are so smart and you are so funny. And so that's another thing that I, that you bring to the coaching experience uh, that I think that those who are wanting to are already able to laugh at themselves and realize <laughs> we carry we carry so much weight with us and, and everything so much heaviness and you bring this lightness to the experience and I, I really just really want to celebrate that in you oh thank you yeah it's taken me a while and one of the things I'll say is seriousness is of the ego it's not of our highest selves. Mm -hmm. so when we are like so serious and I have to do this and it's got to be this way, like that's the ego and it's got you by the short hairs. So, so, so when I catch myself, like, like I was talking about earlier, like being right or like, I know I'm right. I know I'm right. <laughs> then I'm like, uh-huh, sure you are, Karen. Like you're the smartest person on the planet. Yes, you are. Like, here you go. Go sit in the back seat. I got this. <laughs> because we can laugh about it or we can like get a club and beat ourselves like which one do you think would work better quicker <laughs> and how do you want to learn <laughs> yep. yep that's great so if people want to catch more of what you have to offer how can they find you well I do have right now a free possibilities call mm -hmm. and that's on connectwithkaren.us and it's a free 45 minute call with me and we will open up possibilities, possibilities that you may have been afraid to say out loud up until now. And we're going to talk about like what you really want, why you really want it, because without the why, it's just a nice idea. And if you're anything like me, it might take you 20 years to act on it. And I don't want that for you. And we'll also talk about what's held you back. And we'll come up with a plan. Like, how do you move forward? That's a big thing. Oh gosh, this used to make me so mad, Joanna. People would say, oh, you have to love yourself before you can love anybody else. I'd be like, yeah, that's nice. Like, this sounds like a bunch of crap. Like, how do I do it? <laughs> well, I teach people how, how. <laughs> so if you're interested in learning more about me, you can book a call at connectwithkaren.us or my website is happinessguru.net, happinessguru.net. Wonderful. And you're also a show host and they could catch you that way too, right? Yes. Every Thursday night at 6 p.m. PST, my show is called Irresistible You, Ignite Your Passion and Purpose. And I love, love, love having people on live with me. And then we do a 30 minute discussion right after the 30 minute episode. And they are so much fun. And it, I feed off energy of people in the room. So the more, the merrier. So join me there on the Win Win Women's Network channel too. All right. <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for taking time to be here with us today. And uh, I love your wisdom. I love your energy. I love your humor. And uh, definitely you've been an inspiration to me. And for those of you who are watching, if you are interested in exploring more about who you are, if you love the process of writing to get clarity and to find self-love and to find self-acceptance and even to discover what's next for you, then um, check out my Journey to Legacy program. We help women really recognize how meaningful their life has been and how powerful it is to share their story. So I look forward to seeing you next time. And thanks for joining us today.